Okay, here we are. We're going to be doing a lab today, and this is going to be household assets and bases. It should be the first lab in your new lab packet, and it looks something like this. So make sure that you have this out, and we're going to start this lab, and we're going to go over all the ingredients that we're working with. Um, we're going to be looking at testing what's called the pH, or the acidity. We want to know what the acidity of my compound is. Does it have a high amount of acids or does it have a low amount of, of acids? And for this, we're going to be using what's called the pH scale. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, and right now I have a pH probe over here that's sitting in a neutral solution. And neutral in the pH scale is going to be um, close to, or actually it is going to be um, 7. So um, that little um, buffer solution is, is keeping that at about a pH that's very, very close to 7. So what we're going to do in this experiment is we're going to be testing the pH in two different ways. We're going to be testing it with what are called um, test strips right here. And these will test whether it's something either an, um, an acid or a base. These are called um, litmus papers. So um, this red can either stay red or it could change to a blue color. This purplish one can either stay purple or it can change to a red. So um, what you can do is with this litmus test is that if it turns red, it's an acid because it kind of rhymes. And um, this is blue, and if it turns blue, it's going to be a base because blue and base, they have the same um, you know, starting letter. All right, so let's take a look at the ingredients that we're going to be testing. Well, in addition to that, we're also going to be doing it numerically as well, and we'll discuss the numerical versus this quick test that we're, we'll be doing as well. So we're looking at vinegar. So here's our, our vinegar. That's going to be our first, and we have this in test tube number one. We're also going to be looking at... Ammonia, 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 I can't say ammonia, ammonia is going to be in test tube number two. And number three, we've got some lemon juice, well, kind of, we actually have some uh, citric acid, acid. So we have some citric acid there. Now the next one, number four, you want to cross off soft drink. We don't have a soft drink, we have something called milk of magnesia. Okay, so put that in for number four. You do not want to drink this at all. If you see this at home, don't try it because this is to be used when you are completely constipated. And if you're constipated, this milk of magnesia will clear you out and give you the runs. Okay, so um, don't drink this as a soft drink. So that's in test number four. Test number five, we have black or bleach. And this is just regular Clorox bleach. So cross stuff, we don't have drain cleaner. But drain cleaner and bleach are, are kind of close to each other. Drain cleaner is just a little bit more thick. For the next item, number six, we have our detergent. And for number seven, we have baking soda that's been dissolved. And this is going to be sodium bicarbonate. So that's the seven things we're going to be taking a look at. Vinegar, ammonia, lemon juice, or citric acid, milk of magnesia, Bleach, we have then our detergent and our baking soda. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be testing um, both the acid or base, and we have a little chart here where it says blue litmus and red litmus. We're going to be filling in that chart, and I will show you the completed chart at the very end as, as well. So we're going to be taking the blue litmus, and we're going to be taking test tube number one. So here's test tube number one. And I'm going to test this to see what happens, okay? So what happens is that this paper you can see turned, um, the blue turned red. And so what I'd like you to do is on your chart here, I want you to write that the blue litmus turned red like that, okay? Now let's see what happens if we put the red strip in, okay? The red strip going in and the red strip, strip stays red. So you can record red and red. Okay, R and R, like that. Okay, so I'm not going to hold that up every time, but I'm going to be um, calling these off. So going on to ammonia, let's see what ammonia tells us. Okay, ammonia, when I put that in, it stays 
kind of blue. Okay, let's go ahead and take this into ammonia and see. And the red strip turns blue. So it's going to be B and B for ammonia. Blue and blue. Again, red indicates that it's going to be an acid. B indicates that it's going to be a base, which is the opposite of, of an acid. Okay, going on to our third one, we're going to be testing it with a test strip. And this is, again, our citric acid. Well, citric acid or lemon juice, you should probably think that, yes, it's going to turn red because it's an acid. We're going to check to make sure that it's an acid with this strip right here. And the red stays red. So lemon juice is red and red, which means that it's an acid. Going on to number four, milk of magnesia. Okay, tapping that in there. It's kind of a whitish, milky stuff. And that stayed purple. Okay, putting this into here. Okay. Kind of whitish in color, but you can see there's a, a little bit of, 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 of blue in there as well. So for milk and magnesia, you want to put um, blue and blue. So bleach, what is bleach? Is bleach an acid or is bleach a base? We'll check it out. Here's the litmus for the blue. And the blue do that again. Oh, you can see this, it's kind of interesting. Turning white. What's going on with that? So for bleach, okay, it turns white. And for the red, this Turns. Well, it looks like a hint of blue, but it also kind of turns white as well. So that's not turning neither blue nor red. And we'll discuss that in a few minutes at the end of the lab. Next one we're testing is the detergent. Okay, this is just regular laundry detergent. Do you want to add acid or do you want to add bases to your clothing? Okay, it kind of stays bluish. So for detergent, for the base, we're going to put the blue. And for our test strip here, I'm going to plug that in and see what color it turns. It's kind of hard to see that. It's turning a little bit green. There is a little bit of blue in there as well. So it's blue and blue. Baking soda. Baking soda. Are you baking with something that is um, acidic or basic? Okay. Um, I just dipped the blue in and it's blue. And let's go ahead and test with the test strip. And well, that's kind of interesting. That one stayed kind of red. There is a teeny tiny blue that you can see. So put a blue and then say blue red for the other one. That would be something that's really interesting to discuss as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be taking the numerical or the quantitative of our um, different ingredients here. So what we're really concerned with is the pH, and that's what we're concerned with right there, and that's what we're going to be monitoring. So I'm going to be taking these test tubes one by one, 
And we want to figure out what is the end result of, of this. So I'm now taking it, you can't see this, but I'm taking this probe. Let me actually go back so you can kind of see that probe again. I'm going to be taking this probe out and putting it in each one of the test tubes, one by one by one. And in between, I'm going to also um, rinse with water so I'm not transferring one material to another. I don't need to collect anything. We're just really looking at that number. And so this is the number that we're going to be writing down on our lab assignments. So we're going to be looking at vinegar first. And I'm going to be rinsing right now. Okay. And I'm now putting this into the vinegar. So you can see the pH is dropping. I'm going to be stirring it a little bit here. We want to get a nice um, stable number here. So we're going to wait till this comes close to close to stopping. Okay, 2.8. Okay, so we're going to just um, round this to the tenths. This looks like it's about 2.9. So I'm going to put test number one, and I'm going to record on my chart 2.9. Okay, I'm going to rinse again. Here's just rinsing with water. And now I'm going to be putting this into my next, which is going to be ammonia. What's going to happen to the pH when I put this into ammonia? So I'm going to stir this. Whoa, the pH is going way up. Remember, the pH scale ranges between 0 and 14. So ammonia is going the other direction. We've got a really high number of, for our ammonia. Okay, so that's going to be 11.5. Okay, we're going to rinse our probe. Let me go ahead and go back so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay, rinsing the probe. We're going to be going to the next one, which is the citric acid or the lemon juice. What's going to be happening with pH? Well, remember, lemon juice is citric acid, so we're getting a low pH. So vinegar, which is also an acid, gives us a low pH. Lemon juice or citric acid is also giving us a low pH. So we'll record that as 1.8. We put that in there to sit. And we're going on to our next one, which is going to be the milk of magnesia, also called MOM, M-O-M, milk of magnesia. Let's see what the number is for this. Okay, it's still going up. Now, I would actually expect this to be quite a bit higher than, than this. And I will tell you why later of the milk of magnesia. So it's a magnesium compound. And so magnesium, again, is a positive ion. And this one is taking its slow, sweet time. And I think we're going to stop there. And it looks like we got about 5.00. Completely unexpected with our pH scale because of the coloration that was showing. So I'm a little baffled by that one. So we're going to skip that one for now. 
I'm going to go on to the next one, which is going to be bleach. So I'm going to rinse this with some water and plug this into the bleach. different pH reader. So that's going to be in video two. <laughs> 